Why is it important to deal with resentment in friendships? And what are the consequences of not dealing with it? That's what we're talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine. Do you want to improve your communication skills? Keep meaningful relationships? Learn to express yourself? To find more understanding with other people? Get rid of loneliness? Or just understand yourself better? Subscribe and share my channel. We all have felt resentful towards someone one day or another. That's a normal situation. I would like to talk about how exactly this is happening and how much we don't really see is happening there. Resentment is happening when the other person feels like you either don't understand them and still pressure them into believing something or you ignore them. They feel like their feelings are not respected. It's not that they consciously understand that their feelings are not um, accepted, but it's what they feel. Why is it important to understand that? Because long term it ruins our relationships really big time. If you have an argument over something and you say your opinion to somebody and you feel like the other person is disagreeing and you see that they are really firm on that, that they are not really moving anywhere from their standpoint, leave it because if you're going to pressure them and you're going to kind of win that particular case when you say, well, um, I'm right. And that's what we're going, we're going to do now. It's not about winning the point. It's also about doing something with it. Maybe you were discussing what you should do in a particular situation and the other person is pressuring you into doing this the way they see, they see fit. And you disagreed, but you said, okay, well, let's do that. And you feel like your standpoint was not respected enough. This is where resentment builds. It also happens in some other situations, maybe more common, where we discuss some important topic and we disagree over some, something. And the other person is pressuring us really hard into believing and agreeing with them. And this is also another situation where resentment is really common, when the person sees that their opinion either is being ignored or being disrespected as stupid or uh, named as stupid or unimportant. And if we do that to other people, this is how we provoke resentment. It's very important to think about this and to talk about this. This is why I'm making this video today, because I've, I've seen it a lot of times in friendships, especially, and of course, in closer relationships, when the person does not agree with someone. And even if they say, well, yes, okay, fine. We should look closely at how they do that and whether they are not really being offended. In some situations, or even in many situations, people prefer not to show their feelings because it's not very common today to show your feelings. We live in a society that believes that feelings are bad and showing feelings means weakness which is very destructive because then people get depressed and swallow pills and then they might even get into psychiatry. If we see though, if we look closely at how other people react to our opinions or our arguments, we might prevent that resentment and we might prevent some things that sometimes we deem as inexplicable in situations where we ask something like, why does he or she feel so negatively about me? Where does that come from? And these are the things that usually show that the person was actually having some kind of resentment towards you based on anything. If it's about envy, then it's maybe something you are not capable to deal with. Because if, you, if they're envious, that's their problem that they should be dealing with. Resentment as well, of course. But I'm talking today about how we provoke other people to feel resentful. This is very important that we learn not to provoke that. And if we did, to apologize and to try to change the situation so that we don't do that in future. Because this is very important for us to keep those relationships, as I call it, in good shape. If you feel like you're right and you have an argument with another person and you see that you have to prove that you're right, you might prove it. But you have to understand one thing, even if you have proven yourself right, and even if that works, the fact that you are pressuring the person into believing that you're right is to them in that moment much more important 
than the point that you were making, even if they deep down agree with you. The fact that you're pressuring them is the one that is most important and the one that is driving them away from you because people do not like feeling um, violence coming towards them. If we feel that somebody is trying to pressure us, we feel absolutely right away. We feel on defensive. We feel like somebody is hurting us and we don't care in that moment whether they are right or wrong, right? You must have felt that that way at least one time in your life where you felt like the person maybe is right, but the, the fact that they are pressuring you so much is offensive, is hurtful, is just not acceptable. And in that moment, you were not ready to listen to what they say. Be careful not to do that yourself, because sometimes we do that ourselves. And sometimes we feel like if we do that, we mean well. And that's why the other person should accept this. But the most important point in all relationships of any kind, including friendship, of course, is that it's not about how you meant it. It's how you come across. I'm, I'm glad that it's surfacing more and more today in many uh, discussions about psychology and relationships because this is the common phrase be nice instead of um, be kind instead of being right it's more important even if even if you feel like it's the weak point it's not about uh, being a sissy and so on maybe not but that's how we feel all of us if we're being pressured they feel resentment, they feel offended, they feel violated, and they will not accept our point. They will not respect it. This is why we have to be very careful and we have to look closely at how we do that, sometimes in arguments, conversations, and uh, some discussions. Resentment is dangerous not in the moment that it comes up, it, it's dangerous rather long term. That's another very important moment to consider. I'm more scared, if, uh, if that's the right word, of the person actually paying me back for the resentment sometime later than in the moment that the resentment came. Because when they feel resentful in the moment, they might not do anything. And even if they do or say something, I will know that this is because I offended them in some way, even if I didn't mean to. If it comes up later, let's, let's say a couple of weeks later, in a situation that has nothing to do with what we have discussed previously, that where the resentment came from, it's very hard to say whether the one relates to another. It's very hard to say. This is why it's very difficult to actually feel how the situation is going to unfold, whether we have to confront the person and say, well, you say now because you are offended by my later, by, by my last remark or conversation. This is why it's very um, subtle and it's very hard to actually pinpoint when the person says something out of the blue, like a sarcastic remark, maybe they mock you, maybe they um, uh, provoke you, maybe they show uh, some kind of cruelty even sometimes just occasionally, you know, right? Like they make a joke about your appearance or they make a joke about some kind of thing that you did and you don't understand because they never, they've never done that before. This is how it shows. And they're not going to necessarily tell right away, I'm saying that because you offended me last time. Even if you confront them, they might not do it because they don't like to show that they were resentful. And this is the problem with showing feelings today. This is why we have to be careful whether the, we provoke that. So about provoking, I mean not just once when you did something, you didn't want to offend the person and you apologized and then you, repeat, you don't, re, don't repeat that again. That's one situation. This is the most desired situation because we can all make, all make mistakes. That's okay. But if we pressure the person, if we continue to do the same, knowing that they dislike it, this is emotional violence, which will provoke resentment in them. I'm going to give you one example. One friend tells to the other that they have to, let's say, lose weight. The one person who has to lose weight is very sensitive about that topic. She or he does not like to be to, it to be discussed, especially with another person who gives advice that's maybe not relevant, maybe relevant, but the person is not ready to do it, whatever the situation. 
But the second person who was giving advice constantly repeats it and mocks the person and tries to, you know, bring their attention to the topic again. And that's how the resentment builds up on the first person uh, who feels that they are being attacked. This is exactly where we have to stop and think. What is more important for me, the relationship to keep with that person or to constantly keep doing this? Because if you constantly keep doing this, you're either a sadist or you have some kind of psychiatrical problem because uh, why would you willingly violate the other person's boundaries? That's how what, how you, what you have to ask yourself. Why would you keep saying something you know for sure the other person dislikes, even if you mean well. By meaning well is, first of all, that's very subjective. How me, how well can, can it be if you repeat something that the other person heard many times and you clearly see they are not doing what you're uh, recommending them to do? This is, again, another question of whether that's actually good. But let's say you keep doing this. Um, you're ruining the relationship. That's it. Not they, Not them being offended, but you. And telling them not to feel is another mistake because that's another mistake we make. We say, I mean good for you, I mean well for you, I'm not really offending you, I'm trying to help, I just see that you don't notice this and you need my advice. Um, you cannot change how the other person feels, at least in that moment. If they feel sensitive about something, don't touch that, uh, that topic unless you want to hurt them, that's all. There is no explanation. If you keep coming back to this, you cannot tell yourself that you're a good friend. You're not. A good friend tells it once and lets it go if sees that the other person is not ready to accept it. I've been myself in those situations. Even in some very critical situations where I saw that, for example, a friend of mine is in love with a woman who doesn't love him and he was very suffering from it. He was asking all the time, why is she not writing to me or calling me and so on. And at some point he asked me, what do I think? Only then I said, she doesn't love you. He said, well, I disagree because we've had such a nice time and so on. And I said, that's not the proof of love because the proof of love is actually how much time you have spent overall and how effective that time was. Because if you have spent a couple of weeks together, that's not love. That means it's maybe passion, but nothing else. So um, later, a uh, short time later, he acknowledged that this was true because I let that go. I said, that's your thing. I'm just saying my opinion because you asked. And you're going to think about this. And he did. Not because I told him to do it, because I know that that's how it happens. You say something as a comment, even a passing comment in a conversation, and you let that go. You don't pressure the person. They will even more eagerly think about this. That was not my point, though because I was actually surprised by that question because he asked me out of the blue what I think. But let's say I understand still how it happened. I was surprised a couple of weeks ago because he said, you're right, he, she doesn't love me because he had time to reflect on that. He had time to really think about that. He was not being pressured into thinking about, uh, thinking about that. And he did not have this resentment towards me because I was pressuring them uh, him to believe in this. This is how it works, first of all, more effectively if you want to say something. Second of all, it was not important to me that he accepts my opinion. That's another very good thing, because if we feel like other people have to take our opinion, that's some kind of deficiency in us. We are our own person as much as they are, and we have no moral right to pressure them. That's all. So let's understand one thing. Even if the person consciously believes that they have, for example, forgiven you, or they don't have resentment towards you. If you keep provoking such situations where they feel offended, you might really achieve the result that they have in their subconscious still this resentment that will occasionally show up. It will eventually show up in some way. This is why you have to be careful if you don't want to ruin the relationship. Even if you believe that you're right and you have won 100 times because a lot of times that happens today, especially where we have huge ego and we feel like we have to prove to the other person that we're right. This is what you're preparing. You're preparing slowly your enemy that will show up sooner or later. So if, let's say you want to be that person who doesn't want to offend people unnecessarily. What are the things you have to avoid? The first thing is don't brag. Don't ever brag about something. 
I try not to brag myself in friendships because uh, there are some things that I might be proud of, but I don't believe that I have to um, show up uh, a lot of times and really be insisting on other people accepting me as I want to be accepted or seeing me in a certain light. If they see me in a certain light, in a positive light, then that's fine. If, don't, if not, then, then okay. But if I brag, I basically show to them that they are at least one step lower than me. And this is not healthy because a friendship, like any relationship, should be a mutual equal relationship. Equal on emotional terms. It doesn't mean you have everything in, in, as a circumstances equal. But on emotional terms, you have to be equal. It means you have to be equal in terms that you respect each other, you try to not hurt each other at the very least, and all of those things, more than being equal in terms of money, in terms of status. I'm speaking about emotional things rather than visual, materialistic things. So don't ever brag because you show to the other person that they are just not good enough. That's how they feel. Even if they're not very envious by nature, that's what they're going to see. And they are going to remember that maybe at some point. This is how resentment uh, comes up. It also is a very difficult situation because sometimes you might not feel resentful when the person says something to you, when you understand that they, ha that they brag about something. But maybe later you will feel more resentful towards this because maybe in your life the situation comes where you feel like, aha, it's very nice that they have something that I don't. Let's say you didn't, you didn't care about money previously. And when your friend was bragging about money that they have, you really didn't feel envious. But at some point you got in a very difficult financial situation and you felt suddenly, I would like to have the money and they have it. And then suddenly you remember how they were bragging about this. And that's how you, they, you might start feeling resentful. So don't give people those situations for free, let's say, where they will feel resentful towards you. We have enough problems in our life without this, so don't try to provoke unnecessarily some resentment in people. The second point is quite obvious. Don't hurt intentionally the feelings. If you feel, if you see that the person is very sensitive about some topic, the common topic is weight, which is a very good example because, it, you know, it concerns many people. If you feel like, if you see, if you know that they are very sensitive about this, there is no point in making jokes. There is no point in trying them uh, trying to make them less sensitive about this and say like, don't feel sensitive about this. If they feel sensitive about this, they will feel sensitive about this. You pressuring them to feel otherwise will just provoke resentment, full stop. Don't make jokes if the other person doesn't like them. Some people do not get jokes anyway. Some people do not get your jokes. Some people don't get jokes about certain topics. If you see that the person doesn't like the joke, uh, either try to see whether they're genuinely the fan of jokes and of humor. If not, leave that be. There is no point in showing them that you have good sense of humor and they don't get it. You will just show them that you know or can do something that they don't. Again, this is you rising yourself above somebody. And this is going to hurt their ego and their feelings and everything else that comes with it. Depending on how their character is, um, or depending on their character, you will still provoke some negative attitude towards you, whatever that's going to be. Maybe it's going to be the envy that you make good jokes and they don't, and they cannot do it. So uh, showing them and showing off again is uh, the provocation that you're basically doing over really nothing. It's, it's not necessary to do it. The next point is very important. Resolve conflicts in friendship. This is what I'm going to be talking about later in on this blog. As fast as possible, as soon as possible, and as openly as possible. Apologizing for the, for the sake of apology is not what's going to make the person feel justified, I would say, or feel better. If they see that you just apologize uh, to make the situation go, that does seem insensitive. It just doesn't feel like an apology. Resolve this as soon as possible. It means you might even say something, you know, I'm a person who occasionally says mm, bad jokes, let's say. You might even openly say that. 
you know, uh, that's that's just my old habit. Just forgive me. If you see it like this, it comes up, uh, comes off more genu genuinely than if you say like, well, um, I'm sorry, I didn't know that your sense of humor was so bad. That's not an apology. That's an attack. Or I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it again. Okay. If you and if you really don't do it again, then you mean it. But in that moment, the person doesn't know. So try to be a little bit more open, maybe why you did this, but don't pressure them. That's important to believe that they have to accept it. That's very important. If you understand and if you explain how that happened, let's say you make jokes that sometimes are weird or offensive. You can just say it. That's OK, because if it's your friend, we're talking about friendship here. They have to accept it as, a, as one of your features. The thing that they don't have to accept is if you keep doing it. But they can accept that you occasionally have that and you might do it with some other people who understand that. OK, let's say you make jokes very politically incorrect. We're not going to give example, but let's say it's something very politically incorrect and uh, the person feels offended by it. Uh, don't tell those jokes to that person. You might share it with some other people who get you and the person will accept that you have they have to accept that you have it, but they don't have to accept if it comes towards them. So be careful with this. Try to distinguish if you're a good friend, if they dislike something, um, apologize and don't repeat it. If you repeat it, you create this resentment more and more. Overall, we can say try to keep your relationships, whatever they are, especially friendship in this case, clean of resentment clean of resentment because you can always clean this up if that happens. Friendships have a lot of that. In some cases, the person offended is the person who is guilty of this because let's say they're envious. They are envious by nature. Such people are offended all the time. Offended maybe is not the right word, but resentful towards others because they always feel um, beneath other people and they feel like they're worse and they feel like they have to sometimes prove that they're that they're good enough and so on. That's their problem that they have to resolve. But let's say it's a person who has suffered for a long time from a disease that you now are making jokes about. That's not really their fault that they feel resentful towards you. So try to be more sensitive towards people. It doesn't mean to be a mommy who is uh, wiping tears from another from the other person's face. That's not what I mean. I mean, just be genuinely sensitive towards this. And if you feel like the other person is manipulating with their sensitivity, that's another topic, because if they feel sensitive and offended by everything, that's another topic. But if you see that it's just one topic or two topics, that there really is a no go for them, let's say, don't make jokes, don't provoke arguments. And if it's something you all both disagree about, it's OK. You you have the right to be disagreeing about something, but both of you don't have the right to pressure the other person into accepting their point of view. That's um, ruining the relationship. That's building the resentment that will sooner or later come up and destroy the relationship. Try to be careful with not doing this if you care about your relationships, especially in friendship. And let me know in the comments, have you dealt with this? Have you been on receiving end or have you been maybe provoking something? Maybe there are some things you might work on. It's very interesting to know because maybe I have missed something. Let me know and I see you in the next video. Bye.